what the Roman cult was doing. The Roman cult was, was using the law and using the power of argument in the law to make a claim of right, an enormous claim of right. Now, the claim of right that the Roman cult was, was making was that the entire world, everything, us, animals, everything, was under their control. And no one had refuted it effectively because deals had been done with uh, Philip of France Philip of France, with his own indiscretions, had agreed to divvy up the spoils of the Templars and the Templars had been dispatched. The, the only military force capable of, uh, of uh, going after the Roman cult at the time had been betrayed by the king who was supposed to be its protector. So with this kind of darkness, with this kind of deception, Martin Luther... Uh, could see that there was nothing standing physically in terms of enforcement between the Roman cult and total domination. But what he did know was argument is argument. Law is law and every argument that is founded on sand can be argued against, can be disputed. And so he punched on against the door his 95 thesis where he challenged the claims of the Roman cult to its core. Well, that is precisely and exactly what we are doing with one heaven. The nature of argument is this. Unless you refute, you agree. A maxim of law. Uh, one who does not assert his rights has none. So unless we stand up and challenge the claims of the Roman cult and its canon law of 983, and it's hundreds of years of papal bulls, and it's many, many concordance, and all the other law that it has put in place. Unless we challenge it at its core, it stands as canon. It stands as rule of law. It stands as the mode of control of this entire planet. Now, no one, and I wish this was not true, but it is, no one has challenged the Roman cult to its core for over 490 years. That is an extraordinary period of time. But you are witnesses, whether you know it or not, or whether you wish to be or not, but you are witnesses to a moment in history where for the first time, because Martin Luther didn't even do this, for the first time there is a superior form of law, a superior canon law, 22 books will be unfurled, three have been promulgated, the fourth is being finalised, the first being divine law, divine canon law, the second being natural law, the third being positive law, which we'll be discussing in a moment, the fourth being ecclesiastical law, and the fifth being administrative law. Uh, the re remainder are uh, described uh, in, in those laws and explain what they are. And that has been uh, put on the internet. It has been described. And I assure you, the Roman cult know that the challenge has been set. Well, how do I know? How do we know? Well, some of you may not have known in the paper. You may have heard of this. Uh, and some of you may, may not know at all, but as we speak tonight, in Rome, there is an extraordinary emergency conclave of cardinals, of all the cardinals, all the princes of the Roman cult, the Roman Catholic Church, in Rome tonight, meeting with Pope Benedict, as well as the leaders of the main Christian churches. And this kind of event has, in my reckoning, never occurred as an emergency, as an extraordinary conclave. Now, what little media went out was that the cardinals were meeting uh, because they were concerned about the pedophilia. But once that story went out, nothing has come out since. And as to the leaders of the Christian churches arriving in Rome, just happening to be at the same time, 
uh, there was some media saying that it was merely uh, a meeting uh, as part of the ecumenical um, Catholic agenda. Now, what they speak of in private, I don't know. And I'm not going to speculate whether it has anything to do with the first challenge to their authority in 490 years and the fact that there is no way they can respond. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But it is worth reminding ourselves that for all the problems we face, all the challenges we face, and these being no different to Martin Luther 490 years ago, we are witnessing history. The covenant of one heaven is a covenant that brings to an end and fulfills all previous covenants. And it is a crucial part of the lawful, legal end of trusts, of testamentary trusts, of all claims to bring back balance. Now, given that law is an argument, it, it's not possible to simply say that the Roman cult are mentally ill and that what they've done is false. One has to present a counter-argument and enable both to uh, effectively fight themselves out and the strongest win. That's the nature of the law. Law is, is controversy, argument, resolution. So when people say to you, if they say to you, oh, this sounds like a cult, you now know that such comments are deliberate ignorance or unwitting ignorance and that people have no idea when they say those things that they are witnessing history. But I hope all of you now know and all of those listen now know that this is truly a moment of history and we will prevail, we have prevailed. There are four days of notorial procedure that are taking place to end the rule of those insane running this world. Wow. The first was the day of divine agreement. Yes. That's happened. The second is the day of divine protest and dishonour. That's this December 21st. The third, and this is purely notorial procedure, the third is the day of judgment. That's December 21, 2011. And the fourth is the day of redemption uh, on 2012. They are the four days and uh, the second day is coming this December the 21st. Now, I'm just going to close the door because there's a car <laughs> tooting its fault outside. <laughs> and then I would like to go through some new information with you um, for those, again, who are new and those that have been uh, part of these calls in the, in the past about the origin of testamentary trusts uh, versus the first express trust in history. So I'll be literally 10 seconds. One moment. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> when you go to court and you face the judge, we've discussed this before, <clears throat> but it remains crucial. You know that there is some power in those courts. You feel it. You sense it. Even if the court is in a modern form, there's something about it. What I want to do is reveal to you the source of their power, the origin of their spells, where it comes from and why, so you are under no illusion as to the history and how it came to be. Now, I mentioned Unum Sanctum, which is the first express trust and the first trust ever created in history. Curia being a Latin word for trustee, the Curia being the court of trustees, and the trust that they administer being Unum Sanctum, the first trust claiming the world. Now, we live in a world now of the e-states, and a number of you are probably familiar that one of the uh, hottest uh, documents going around the freedom movement at the moment is the concept of a letter uh, in establishing an estate and uh, in resurrecting your position in an estate. But what is an estate? That's the key. <clears throat> and one needs to think very carefully if one is doing something in ignorance 
even if it's claimed as a magic bullet, until you understand the origin of it. Well, there are a second form of trusts that dominate the world today, and that is the concept of a testamentary trust. And the second concept of a testamentary trust is that uh, a, um, a, a grantor, being the testator, uh, writes a testament and a will, and on their death, a trust is created in the conveyance of property from a living trust to the testamentary trust to be administered by executors and administrators with beneficiaries. And given that the testator is deceased, then the nature of the deed rarely if ever can be changed the trust can continue in perpetuity and the role of the executors and administrators is rarely challenged so let's have a look at uh, the origin of uh, three uh, testamentary trusts now to do this I, I need to ask you to go to a website so that all of you can have a look as we go through because this is the website that I'll be referring to when I speak with you. The website is one-evil.org that is o-n-e hyphen evil.org and when the home page comes up what I like you all to do is you'll find uh, down the bottom left a box that says evil rituals and the second last link you'll see is a link that says Papal Bulls on Human Skin. If you click that link, uh, you will go to uh, Papal Bulls. Well, just as Unum Sanctum, I'm now going to talk about uh, this based on everyone hopefully going to that link from uh, 1-evil, O-N-E-evil.org, going to Evil Rituals and clicking on uh, Papal Bulls on Human Skin. The page that comes up gives you some background as to the origin of Papal Bulls. Uh, the first thing that it, it shows you, and, and it will it challenge a lot of people, uh, is that uh, Papal Bulls are spells. Papal Bulls are not just spells, but they're evil spells, using concepts that come from black magic, and in fact are a central element of black magic. And if you go further down on the page, you'll actually see an extract of one of the grimoires written by these popes, where they describe exactly the process of creating the parchment and the vellum upon which papal bulls were written and are written, even if we are faced with now most papal bulls that we see in public being horrendous frauds and forgeries, uh, bearing no resemblance to the original spells. Those original documents being stored in the vault, never to see the light of day. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, uh, to click on uh, a link on that page which says list of papal bulls at the top, or there's another link uh, to the top right that just simply says papal bulls. And when you click on that link, what will appear is a list of papal bulls. And if you go down to the end, uh, you'll see uh, the three that I'd like to talk to now. Uh, the first being in 1455, called Romanus Pontifex by Pope Nicholas V, which is the first testamentary deed and will in history in the creation of Crown Land. So while Unum Sanctum was extremely powerful, uh, it could still be challenged, it could still be corrupted. But in 1455, Nicholas V uh, came up with the brilliant idea that he would convey into a new type of trust, being a testamentary deed and will, all the rights of land and chattel to an estate of the Roman pontiff convey it from Unum Sanctum to this new. And in doing so, strengthen the claim of Unum Sanctum and strengthen and protect through Romanus Pontifex. 
So this is the uh, papal bull 